Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose Hey I there, folks. We are here. We're back. We're gay. We're living life. Here we are. Yes. Up on top of the Prudential Center in fabulous Boston, Massachusetts. What do you think? I get sent free clothes now? Sure. The, I would never buy this. Me too. This, yeah. <laughs> it looks I, nice. I'd wear that. It's nice. It's not me. It feels like a like an accomplished man would wear this. Yeah, you feel like you ski and you uh, have a business. You have yes. a startup. It yes. looks like you. There's a bunch of people in a circle, and then you're talking to them. You're like, we're gonna go inside, right. and we're gonna go outside. I'm inside and outside them. We're gonna get them on the run. We're gonna keep them on the run. Yeah, I should have a, a cell phone on my belt. Yeah, I, I run a tile company or whatever the hell. But if I get clothes, I wear them. I, I like wearing a new thing. I'll never wear this again, but it's new, so I wear it once, and then I never wear it again. You know what you look like? You look like you have Oakley sunglasses with the band that comes ah, across. Ah, the band. You look, yeah. You, you gotta like, get the band back uh, together. Strapped on sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. I'm out in Connecticut. I got a schooner. Maybe a, like an older BMW, like a, like a, like a 90s one. Mm, that no, sounds nice. getting specific here. But, uh, yeah, you wear your clothes. I don't know. I get sent stuff, and uh, I'm just going with the same old shit. I haven't done laundry in 70 years. It's all over now. With a baby, it's all out the door. Everything's it's, puked on, shit on, spit on, come on. It's just a CSI over there. It's a spectral vi special victims unit. Yeah, and you drop off the laundry. It's three bags of laundry. We have an extra Woo! bag now, and then I'm like, I didn't get the laundry. I've been wearing this since 78. Don't put the baby in there on accident, you know? Get them... Spinning around on that spin cycle. I think it might like that. That does seem fun. It's a perfect size for it now. I was just saying that my mother has a washer dryer in the house, and it's one of the ones at the window, and you can watch it go. Oh, yeah. And all I can think is, like, this baby's going to shit his pants when he sees this. Oh, yeah. That's a good time. Be like Rain Man. So my water, my heat has been out for, like, eight years. We had that, too. Really? Just for a night. but Oh, it's been rough. It's been a couple weeks now. So I emailed the guy, and I go, hey, I'm not weeks. paying. No, you don't have to pay. Well, That's we got heat, but we don't have, we don't have a uh, gas, ah, whatever that is. My baby's got a lot of that. Yeah, so do the Nazis. But the, like the stove won't turn on. But the heat is coming out of the f furnace. Thank you. So heat, but no gas, no yeah, no stove. flame. Ah. So we got we got air fryer cooking, and we got a slow cooker. So now we're all electric, like Musk, but. You can't dry your clothes in the dryer in the basement. Uh, oh, so the whole building? Whole building. This is outrageous. Outrageous. So I, I emailed the guy. He goes, I'll knock off a couple bucks, which it took enough for me just to email the guy. So I was like, hey, I won. I, you would think the whole building would get together and I know. say, hey. And then I go, how long? And they go, we don't know. I'm like, what do you mean we don't know? What the fuck does that mean? I have no idea. So I think you know we're, we're making the move eventually. But now you got to wash your clothes, take them out, and then walk to a dryer like a, la a Chinese lady. Hungry. Exactly. <laughs> so it's a whole thing. It's a whole to-do. Whereas you used to go down there, drop it off, go up, rub one out, watch Golden Girls, go back in, flip it to the dryer, go up, watch uh, half a Napoleon, and then... Get it out of there. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Even if I had a washer-dryer right in my house, I think I'd still drop my laundry off. I can't be bothered to be the, the, the flipping and the flopping and put a sheet in. Really? And a thing in and a fucking... The, you got to eat a Tide Pod now. I love the Tide Pod. I, I, I don't want to do any of it. I don't want to. I don't know how to fold. My folds come out all fucked up really? and stupid. Yes, you I'm a bad, a bad folder. Bad fold. All right. Well, I don't know. My The lady does that. She brings it to the Asian. I like the downstairs. Uh, with the quarters and everything? You bring a stack of quarters? They or it's do free it, in the building. They get the card machine. Okay, so you got to pay for the laundry anyway. Yeah, but it's like eight bucks. Okay. You go to the you go to Wuhan, it's 78. 
Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm in Queens. I don't know. I got nice people. I think it's the best deal in New York what? City. Maybe. Every single piece of clothes, washed, dried, pressed, folded, smooth fold. Good fold. For like 16 bucks. All my clothes. 100% 16? of my clothes. I don't have a lot of clothes, obviously. But yeah, 16, 7, 18 bucks. This, what? This fucking stupid plastic cat food dish of oatmeal Ugh. and this half an egg was 18 bucks. Manhattan yeah. sucks. It's you rough. gotta move out of Manhattan, but not not to Brooklyn. Yeah, <laughs> the fact it. that you're moving to Brooklyn makes me want to take my own life. I, I, I don't know what you can do. You're, they're going to string you up and shoot you. <laughs> I'm gentrified. I'm going to walk in and just get a bullhorn and go, retard, and just get it out early. They're going to see you. They're going to be. Th- it's going to be like uh, the opening of, uh, what would you just say earlier? Napoleon. Napoleon or the end of Braveheart. Same film. It's all the same. They're going to be throwing carrots at you and apple cores and banana peels. Freedom. They're going to get me on the blue face. They're going to think it's black face. They're going to screw me over. It's no good. Get out of there. But anyways, over there in Queens, 15 bucks to get all my clothes clean. That's a deal. I get it now. But you still got to leave the house and then go pick it up. That's what I don't like is the leave. You're leaving the house. You're going down to the basement. I am now. I'm saying I hate it. Like I, I, I miss... know, but even in the basement, you're still leaving the apartment, going to the basement. True, but I haven't hit, I haven't hit uh, outdoor sky. I got no, no outdoor on me. I love outdoor sky. That's the best sky. It's, uh, it's the only sky, really, <laughs> except for the sky lounge or sky lark. But uh, I miss flying. Ah, uh, really? You don't hear that every day. The lounge, you, well, to travel. I like lo- once you're there, once you're in the air, it's kind of fun. You fart, you go, you walk around. That's true, you but have a meal. I had the weird thing yesterday. I was at uh, Salt Lake City with Giannis. He went first class. I was in the back. Ouch. Meanwhile, he's doing the club. I'm doing the theater, and I'm still in the back. That's because you're retarded. You have I a know. mental retardation. It's, well, I booked too late, Jerry. <laughs> I mean, so take a different flight. I mean, you can fly private if you wanted to. Well, I got to get back. You go back from the west. I get home at nine in the nine in the night. West to east, I can, can suck my asshole and spit it on my dick. It's the worst thing ever. Agreed. You leave at three thirty a.m. You get home at seven p.m. the next night. It's Nightmare. the worst. Nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then, of course, we land. Giannis waited for me, which is a, he's a mensch. And then he goes, uh, all right, you want to get home? I go, well, I'm hitting the lounge. And he's like, you're hitting the lounge on the way in? I'm like, you're damn right I am. That's dinner. Uh, so then we split. Uh-huh. But, it's always weird with the, the play because you, you walk and then you just go to different places anyways. Yeah, I know. I was like, you didn't have to wait. What, what are you doing? That's a sweet. He's a sweet man. Sweet, I love Giannis. Sweet Greek. But, Good boy. So let me get back to the clothes. The clothes in the dryer. Ah, the clothes. So I didn't know the the dryer shit was done because you put it in there and it still spins. There's just no heat. Oh, so you yes. had spinning wet, spinning wet. <laughs> so I uh, a tangled wet we spin. I got the spinning wet. I get it out of there. Woo! I did my part. Hey, the, I'm all done. My clothes are clean, soaking wet. You go, what the hell? And I talk to the super. He's like, yeah, yeah. There's no no heat. I go, fuck. This uh, is a terrible situation. So I br- I had to run. I bring it back upstairs, and I go, all right, I got to run. You know, I'll just let these dry out. I didn't know you have to separate them. I just got a big <laughs> clump of wet jizz in my living room, just collecting mold, mildew, and, and queefs. And it got super moldy. And the wife's like, hey, you got you to gotta go dry that. They're gonna, you're going to ruin these. And I go, ah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Shut up, woman. And then two days later, I pull them out. They're dry, but they smell like my dad's schmegma. Oh, God. The bold and the beautiful. So then I go to the Chinese lady and I go, hey, you got to redry these. They, they, they dried. It's almost like a beer. You know, a cold beer is great. A hot beer is not good. Uh-huh. But if you get a hot beer and try to recold it, it's not good. No, you can't recold. Can't recold. But what's interesting is you can take warm beer. And make it cold. If you take cold beer. beer and make it warm, that's true. And then make it cold. It's bad. Yeah. So it could stay warm all day and then get cold. Yes, that's good. It's a, but if it goes cold, warm, cold, it's bad. It's a very schizophrenic beverage. Yeah, I don't get it. It's all about temperature, Jerry. I bet some. We had Neil deGrasse Anal here. He could tell us the whole physics on brewskis. But who knows? Did Conan with him? Did not smile once. He hated me. I could see that. Yeah, he didn't care for me. All right. I think well, he's racist. He's a smart guy. but Not really. Uh, so I bring it to the Chinese lady, and I go, all right, put this on super heat, go nuts, really blast it. You know, put it in the furnace, put it in the incinerator. 
I come back two hours later, and she goes, here you go. There's a fortune cookie on top. There's a little cat doing this for some reason. Always. Uh-huh. And then I go, uh, thank you. I get it back home. Woo, baby. Smells worse. Oh, if, if you want, if you on. heat shit, it smells worse. If you put cat shit on a on a on a hot plate, it's gonna smell worse. Of course, heat is bad for smell. Heat is bad. It's like mold that you have on the shirt. I got I got super heated, warm mold. It's yes. like in a hot tub. Like oh, yes. now I feel good. So right. The mold like kicked up. Well, think about if you took a shit and put it in the microwave and put a thirty for high, high for thirty. I meant I do it. With my wife's cooking. But so now I don't want to, I don't want her to know she was right. So I'm just putting this shit on. So I'm wearing a full, wearing a three piece moldy suit, walking around town, and people are going, "Oh, I'm on the subway." It's like a like an old deodorant commercial. Or I walk in, they're like, "What's up with this guy? It smells like a dumpster." So now I'm wearing these new clothes because. Everything I own smells like ass. I really think the sunglasses would go good. Yeah, I can't do the, the strap around like the Brett the Hitman heart. Thing. I can't. I'd rather rather wear a strap on. But so yeah, I got uh, I got moldy jizz all over my clothes and my you open my closet, it's like it's like there's eight migrants living in there. Oh boy. Yeah. I, 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 these apart these New York apartments, we all got to move. We got to get the hell out of here. It's a terrible place to be. It's not ideal and it's not normal. We're really uh, punishing ourselves just for uh, some restaurants and some lights and a big tree and a Palestinian protest. Well, everything was built in 1489. It's yeah. it's all candlelight and bullshit, but we just had the same thing. I take a shower at night and and now everything is all these, you know, the classic thing with the kid, all the breaks are so precious. You're like, I'm going to go take a hot yeah, shower. Ah, yes. Have a nice 45 minutes in the shower and I hadn't showered all day and it's like the end of the night. And I think I was going somewhere. I can't remember. But I was like, mm. I'm going to take a hot shower. And you're just in the shower, and it just never warms up. Right. And you're like, oh. And, and this bullshit of, like, you know, I know Wim Hof and Rogan and uh, my bath. sister's ass. Yeah. It's like, but it's not fun when you want a hot shower. No, I love a hot shower. And then you come out, and I think that's the name of your dry cleaner. Hot shower. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I come out. I come out, and the heat doesn't work, and I got a baby. So all night I'm like rubbing the baby, blowing on uh, him. I'm putting a, a bag on his head to keep him warm. Sure, and it's 48 degrees, and you got to text the landlord at 6 a.m. and you're like, "Hey, the heat is out again. We just had yeah, this two right. weeks ago." And now there's a baby involved. So, like, it's me. I'll take it. But we got a toddler here. Step on it. I know. So you got to sit on him and, and fart in his face to keep him warm. Sure. And then he goes, okay, well, the plumber will be over at 10 a.m. Uh, the, the pilot's out or whatever. It's in the audience. <laughs> the pilot is in the audience. So then you get the, now I'm wrestling with the baby, trying to get the baby to fall asleep. It takes an hour and a half. He's crying, whatever. He finally falls asleep. And then as soon as he closes his eyes, you hear, ding, dong. Uh, and the, ba- the eyes shoot open. Sure. Plumber guy comes. He's like, and he, he's one of these guys. He's like a happy plumber. Uh-huh. So he's coming up the stairs. <laughs> Wow, what is this, the 50s? And he's like, he's dragging his uh, fucking bag, he's got his wrench, clank, clank, clank. Oh. Hey, there, he, he yells from downstairs, I'm not joking, he comes out, he's like, hey, up there, 2F, heard you got the file out. This is like a plumber. Like, Shut the fuck up. He's like a plumber in a porno. Like, you, you see that and you go, no plumber's that happy with the wrench slinging and the whistling. Well, I wish he folded my ankles over my head and plowed sure, me. Because sure. Check those pipes. <laughs> it would have been nice. He comes up and I go, I'm sorry. So I had to like meet him halfway and I'm like, I'm sorry. I got, I got, a, I got a four week old baby. He just fell asleep and he's like, oh yeah, got gotcha. you. 10 uh... 4. I'm just gonna, I swear to God, I'm just gonna go downstairs. It sounds like the pilot's out. I'll go ahead and I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. He goes down there, he fixes it, and then I'm like, like and I can hear the heat clicking on. Because heat in New York, or any apartment in a, an old city, it's not like it just comes on, all of a sudden it's warm. It's like this. Yes, yes. And I'm like, okay, it's on. <laughs> you sound like my dry cleaner. <laughs> and so it's, it comes back on, so I'm like, all right, I got to go cut him off at the pass, because I know he's going to whistle Dixie all the way up here. Sure, sure. And sure enough, I hear him coming, he's like, Hey, yeah, I got it all lit up up there. I'll be right up to check it. <laughs> I'm like, shut up, you piece of shit. I almost McAllistered him. I wanted to put a paint can on a rope and swing it down and hit him. Sure, sure. And he comes, and I'm like, I'm like the baby. I got a, I'm, I'm one of these guys now. Yeah. Like, I got a baby, you piece of shit. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got you. I forgot, I forgot. And then he comes all the way up, and I'm like, I'm telling him, I'm like, it's on, it's on, it's good. 
And he goes, yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, yeah, so just don't take a shower for 20 minutes. It's got to heat up. And I'm like, it's on. I don't need you anymore. Right. Get Get the bricks. out of here. And, of course, the baby's up for half an hour. Ah! So uh, I just showed him pictures of plumbers and put the plunger on his face and quieted him down. (laughs) But um, what was I going to say? Something else. Oh, and then Rana on that fucking pimple. Uh, He's loud, too. I love Rana. Joe and Rana on Talk Movies. Best pod going. Check it out. It's the best. It's the greatest. The numbers are through the roof. This is uh, everybody's favorite new podcast. There you go. Uh, <laughs> those are all argue garbages lines. I don't know if that was coming through. Ah. Anyways, so uh, he's got like a 7.30 a.m. flight. I'm awake anyways. The baby's awake. doesn't matter. But I just hear this. Ronan's fucking? I go, what the fuck is this? So I, I look out the little people. He's texting while leaving the apartment, and he's just dragging his suitcase. Oh, it's 7.30. Oh, my God. I'm like, pick up your suitcase. Pick it up, Finish the psycho? text downstairs. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm like, what are, you, what are you selling, books on the road? Bricks? Yeah, you Bible salesman? Should have said bricks. Brick is funnier than book. Ah, ah fuck. Anyways, yeah, he's clanging down the thing. So every noise now, which brings me to my next point, and I, I've never had anything blow up like this in my life. I got to mm. start thinking outside the box. Okay. I'm over here doing an hour of killer stand-up comedy. Mm. That's no good. That's out. No that one cares about sucks. that. I got, you know, a podcast where we talk about blowing our dads and eating jizz. Yes. I think it's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Now I'm that, howling laughing. That's comedy. Ten years straight. I never laughed so hard in my life. We topped off on numbers 48 years ago. Yeah, we plateaued. I'm over here talking about movies. I'll break down a movie and call Ron on a piece of shit with the best of them. Sure. That doesn't get anything. I'm talking mental health with a bunch of fucking slow people going, hey, maybe your dad touched you. Yeah. That don't do nothing. All right. A lot of effort. Uh, Sometimes I'll write a film, a feature film. I'll act right in it. (laughs) That don't move the needle. Rotten tomatoes can blow me. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck you, tomato meter. So I got an old asshole, an old cunt across the street from my house. Oh, oh, I was going to say, that's no way to talk about Sarah. <laughs> I got, uh, and I think maybe they're Serbians. It's her and her husband. Mm. He wears, a, he had a mask on, a COVID mask. Yeah. It looked like the Serbian flag. Oh, really? So, uh, but I don't know. It's like a red and white checker. Could just be a red and white checker okay. with a blue thing, whatever. Okay. Every morning, 8 a.m. Oh, boy. I just hear this. <laughs> well, has he got a drone <laughs> out there? She has a electric fucking leaf blower. Oh, I videoed man. it. I put it on Instagram. I've never had anything blow up. I got, I'm got. i not kidding. I got 750 messages. This piece of shit. You should really? shoot her. You should fuck her. My next special is just going to be an old lady leaf blowing. Wow. It's going to be called Joe List Blows Leaves. And yeah. I'm going to just stand there while someone blows leaves all over the town. That sounds like a lot of hot air. But... Uh, <laughs> She blows le- First of all, who has a leaf blower in New York City? I've I know. Never even heard of that. There's four leaves. Well, I wish she would leave me alone. <laughs> yes. <folks. laughs> That'll get the podcast to the top of the now charts. Yeah, we're cooking. She comes out and she blows them to a pile, and then her fucking stupid Jokovic and husband sweeps them into a thing. Mm. But she- it would be one thing if she kept it on and just went. Right, Voo! right. But it's this. Voo! Uh, the erratic. You can't tell when it's happening. 8 a.m. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm awake now. I wake up at 4.30 a.m. I'm a fucking farmer. Sure. But still, We're you're farmers. like, you're, you're sitting there with the baby. You're trying to whatever. And sit there and fucking calm. If he's sleeping, you get a little work done. Well, what do you do with this? Should I go out there? Should I kick her in the ass? You know what I'm thinking about doing is collecting all the leaves on my side of the street and then just putting them on her side of the street. Uh-huh. And people are like, well, she's just going to go out there and do it again. I'm like, I know, but it's worth it to me to yes. make her keep doing her fucking stupid leaf bullshit. I know. Go move to the sticks. You you want leaves around. You want to have a garden. You want to shovel and rake. Get the fuck out of here. Well, also, I'm like, you live in an apartment. I know. Where does your leaf blower live? Is it just on your living room? Like, is it in the closet? It's probably hanging on the wall like a rifle. They got it over the mantle, I guess. But yeah, these leaf blower people, get a rake. Go Amish. Or, or a, a broom, whatever. Who gives a fuck? They're on your sidewalk. It doesn't uh, even make sense. I know, I know. It's not even yours. It's city property. Yes, that's what I don't get. And it goes all day. And so I posted a video just giving her the finger. I'm like, this lady sucks. 
I, I'm not kidding. I've never had anything get more of a response ever. In L.A., they made leaf blowers illegal. Well, I've heard my, my pal Derek, he's an engineer, and he said they're the worst thing because it's the noise pollution and they're horrible for the environment. They it's kick just up pouring shit. gas and fuel and all this stuff. It's like one of the worst things for the environment and the noise pollution, of course. And it's all just because you don't feel like raking, I guess. They yeah. don't even do an efficient job. They're literally blowing all over the place. Exactly. There's nine leaves. I think it just gives her a purpose. This is my daily. I water the plants, I jerk off, and then I leaf blow. And isn't eight o'clock? Is that not fucking egregious? Well, that's what these people do. It's the same with the beep, 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 boop, bop. You know, they got the construction guy out there with the jackhammer at 7 a.m. because they figure you go to work. Uh, that's what it is. So they're like, all right, if people go to work, I'll knock this out. It'll be it'll be gravy. But, but isn't work nine to five? Well, that's nine a whole other bag five. of hammers. We can get into that. But how come I get on the on the road at, at 401 and people go, oh, it's rush hour. I'm like, well, aren't they getting out at five? Isn't think, that strange? I think the nine to five is over because now in New York rush hour, because some people, they can make their own schedules, I think. So they go in from six to three. Ah. I'm six three. Yeah. I so, wish. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I guess they just leave early. But in New York, there's nine million people in the fucking city. Sure. So any time of day, there's at least 750,000 people trying to leave. And it did feel like, look, I've only been doing comedy for 10 minutes, but it felt like when I started comedy, you'd go to a cafe at noon. You were the only cunt in there. Right. Now I go at noon, it, the whole place is filled with cunts. Uh, <laughs> I know it's all pipes and change, but I don't know. Believe me, I've been driving from New York to Boston and back for 27 years, and you leave at any time of day. Any time. Sandy Hook. I always say the traffic's the worst thing that happened there. It's uh, it's a real bummer. But anyways, that lady, I, I don't know. I'm thinking about getting a, a BB gun or a, a bullet gun. What you is know, BB? What does that mean, BB? That's what they call a little BB. I mean, I know that, but what does BB mean? Where did it come from? That's just a word like camera. But isn't the letters BB? No, it's B-E-B-E. No. I'm telling you, give it a goog. I've never seen it written B-E-B-E. I've looked this up. And then it just changed over there. It's much like donut. Donut is D-O-U-G-H-N-U-T. <laughs> this sounds like Gallagher. I know, right? D-U-M-B. Yeah. Really? What do you got B -B? on BB? Ball bearing. Ah! Ball bearing. Yeah. Oh, ball bearing. That makes sense. That's, that's good. Yeah. BB. That's good. Uh -huh. Good call. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when did you look it up? Maybe it was different when you looked it up. Yeah, it was the 40s. It was a while ago. <laughs> they, they a ball it. bearing. That makes sense. Or, or, or bullet ball. It says it could be bullet either. Ball. Bullet ball. Like that, that sounds like a fun sport. That, that sounds like a movie. Behind. You see bullet ball with Schwarzenegger? It's killer. Bullet ball is a good idea for a, for a game. You know, you play, it's like basketball, but uh, somebody has a, a gun. One guy gets a gun on the court. Yes. And then you don't know who it is, though. And then you go up for a dunk and he shoots you in the head. Maybe it's NBA NRA. There's something Aha, there. NBA. Yes. National Bullet Association. Okay. Now we're really solving some problems. Right, but anyways, right. I hate this lady. I want to throw eggs at her. I don't know what to do. Somebody said you should glue leaves on the sidewalk. That's I was, pretty fun. I like that. I was thinking about getting just putting some super glue on the handle so she can't let it go. She's stuck with it. But that's a whole thing. That's trickier. You got to break in the house and get the super yeah, glue. Yeah, good point. Well, might as well just kill her at that, that point. That feels criminal, <laughs> yeah. If you're in the house, just shoot her. Well, hopefully she dies. I, I, I don't know. I hope she dies. I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm, I'm out the door with all the being nice. I hope this lady passes. Not nothing bad. Just like, you know, her steps on her shoelace, falls down the stairs, both hips shatter, maybe some brain injury, bleeds out. Yeah. Nothing serious. Well, it makes you want to do something that would piss her off and then go, all right, I'll stop if you stop. Well, you want to do the thing where you're like, okay, so you're up at A. Well, I'm up at one, and then you want to go out. You want to go outside her apartment, and just go. Whee! I know, right? Get a gazoo, you know. <clears throat> but the problem is, these people go eight is a normal hour, one is not. We have some weird social construct with the the seven a.m. to ten p.m. thing. But some of it is just general consideration. Consideration, and you're in New York City. Like there has to be at least seven hundred people that are hearing this fucking noise. Of course, noise. of course. It was the same with the truck idle. They just. Right in your asshole, and it, it drives me crazy. Well, I did throw an egg. I mean, years ago, I don't know what episode. Someone probably knows, some nerd. Mm. But I did throw an egg off the back of a car years ago at Sarah's old apartment. That felt pretty good. Because yeah. it was idling and blasting music. Right, right. Yeah, that's the scariest thing nice. I've ever done. Every once in a while, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and think about, like, what if that guy had seen me? Oh, yeah. Out of her bedroom window. Like, just forever, they would know. And those guys don't fuck around. 
Those no, this drivers. is a scary. Uh, no, this isn't a truck driver. This was like a uh, listening to hip hop with the decals on the car. Oh, I pictured a big eighteen wheel. No, no, this is. I'd take an eighteen wheel over these ah. guys. This, this was like a real ne'er do well. Gotcha. Got that's one end win word. All right, <laughs> let's keep it moving. <laughs> Cut that out. But uh, yeah, okay. All well, right, so where have you been? What have you been doing? Hit me with something. I don't know. We need something. Well, let me throw this in your pipe and see if it's semen. I had a, a couple of humdingers. I've been selling tickets here and then not selling tickets there. Right. The markets, Jerry. They're all over the road. Markets, Normans. Yes, Boston Market. So uh, I got Santa Rosa, California. Oh, Santa Rosa. That's where the big fire is that right? Yeah, that's massive where the wildfires fire. are. Yeah, Santa Rosa. Oh, I wish I had known that. I thought it was Maui. No, the old one, a couple years ago. Oh, I wish I would. I would open right? with that. Santa Rosa, huge, huge fires. Right. Give it a go. Look up Santa Rosa. I think like 2019. That was like the big, massive fire. Well, how about that? I remember that. They they always get the uh, helicopter and drop water. Remember yeah. that or the plane? That's uh-huh. always fun. It never seems to work. Never does a, a lick of good. I think you need. I think, but imagine if they didn't do it. I guess so. Worse. Santa Rosa was devastated by the 2017 Northern California wildfires, which in the city alone took nine lives. Woo! Like a cat. Like Just a one cat. cat. Yep. <laughs> and destroyed 3,043 homes. Well, wow. wait a minute. Devastated? I, I could be devastated. What do you mean devastated? Like they were hurt or they well, the were affected? I think, I think it means 3,000 th- homes. Yeah, 3,000 homes physically devastated, I'd say. I, right? Oh, I didn't know you could be physically devastated. Yeah. I thought it was a feeling. Again, in September 2020, which may be what you're thinking of, the glass fire also impacted Santa Rosa, destroying another 34 homes glass and damaging fire. 23. Damn. What that? I don't know. Sounds like a bad 80s band. You going to see Glass Fire? Glass Fire! Yeah! So I go to Santa Rosa. By the way, it's called the Luther Burbank Center for the Arts or something like that. Mm. Luther Burbank apparently was like a Gadsby in the in the old days. He was a botanist, and he was just having crazy sex parties in his mansion. Wow. But this is a hidden gem. This is like a weird California town. It's a wine country. It's methy. It's uh, it's all highway and open land. <laughs> what a killer venue! Really? Well, it Th- sounds uh, good and bad. You're like, it's all highway, but then nice. I don't want to live there. I'm saying uh, the venue the is venue. killer. Yeah, and it's just beautiful. George Carlin did his last special there. No That's kidding. That's the spot. The, um, it's bad for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was shot there. That's how good wow. it was. Wow. And I was like, where's this place? No one's everybody's talking about Denver and Phoenix and San Francisco. This place is killer. I, I want to tape something there. Wow. Well, that's a great market. Mm. Those people know their shit over there. The, uh, what do you call it? Bay Area. Is that Bay? That's the Bay Area. Is it? Oh, all right. I mean, that's where you're drawing people from the Bay I Area, guess you're right? right? I, I guess you're right. I think. I could yeah. be wrong. You were just there. I don't know. I don't know how close it is. Yeah, you're right. I, I've landed in SF. Yeah. Drove an Bay hour area. and a half. Okay. Okay, there you go. How I mean, about- these people are very particular about Bay Area. That's true. If you say, hey, that's, Bay, oh, that's not the Bay, but yeah, you're yeah. drawing, that's the market. Yes, yes, the gay area. So great, great venue. Did it with Caleb Sinan. He's a killer. And then uh, had the whole thing where we rent a car. <laughs> Got to give a shout out to Enterprise. Enterprise has figured it out. I mean, Enterprise is great, but we're giving shout outs to massive corporations here. Well, How just- about it for McDonald's? There you go, Starbucks. But <laughs> hey, I'm, Starbucks deserves a shot. I know you like the SB, but I'm just saying, you know my rental car woes. I go here, you got to wait in line, you got to talk to a guy. It's a whole thing. You got to wait. It's brutal. This was like a lady at a podium. It's in the parking garage. You just show up to the parking garage. A lady's in a podium, and she goes, "What's your name?" Okay, here's your key. And I got in the car. Oh, I love that. It was incredible. When it's good, it's great. That is the best. Was that at SFO? Yes. I mean, you got to do the shuttle. You got to do the uh, shuttle to the uh, the car. But hey, you got to still got to get to the car. You know, so if they could invent a place that would just pick you up, like you know how you got the guy with the the black hat and the sign that says list. Yes. Do that with rental cars. But isn't that Avis or Hertz? We'll pick you up. That was their whole thing. Really? Because there is that place. What's We'll Pick You Up Car Rental? We'll Pick You Up. I think it was up. Hertz or Avis. Remember? Avis. We'll Pick You Up. Oh, yeah. That's vague. I'm getting But that's vague the one. Now. They would do that like at your house. If you wanted to rent a car from your apartment, they'd come pick you up. I don't know if they still do that. Wow. OJ Simpson. 
Hey there, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting your mental health in check is one of the best gifts you can give to yourself, and BetterHelp is here to make it happen. They make therapy incredibly easy. Everything is 100% online and suited to your schedule. You can talk to your therapist through video call, phone call, or message whenever and wherever works best for you. Therapy has helped me so much. It's wonderful. My God, I love it. I need it right now because I'm uh, suicidal. But uh, I'll talk to my therapist soon. I got to go next week. I miss him. I just, just a week and a half without seeing him. I'm like, I, I need this man in my life. They can really help you. They talk you off the ledge. They talk you up the ladder, whatever the term is. To get started, just fill out a quick questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. It could not be easier. You can even switch therapists at any time, completely for free, no questions asked. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tuesdays today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. Hey, hey, folks, Tuesdays of Stories brought to you by Sheath. You know we love Sheath. We're back to talk about one of our favorite things, Sheath underwear. You know it, we love it. And you know we're wearing it right now. And you know we're going to have a promo code for you so you can try it out yourself. Sheath is truly the most comfortable underwear I've ever worn. It's super breathable and keeps things cool and dry downtown. The secret is two pouches, one for your dong and the other one for your sack. It keeps everything separated and not a sweaty mess. We love Sheath. I know I'm wearing it right now. I guarantee he's wearing it. I just did them earlier. They're comfortable, they look good, they feel good, the wife's got them, I got them. Get on it! I threw out all my others. No dick, no problem. Sheath also has stuff for the ladies, sports bras, bikini briefs, and boy shorts. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code TUESDAY, TUESDAYS, sorry, to get 20% off your first order. That's Sheath's 100% money back guarantee as well. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESDAYS. Get Sheath Underwear, support the show, and support your balls. Folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Whether you've been naughty or nice this year, it's your business. But if you've been even a little bit naughty, you need ExpressVPN. Private mode doesn't actually keep your internet activity private. Your internet provider can see all the websites you've clicked on and whoever owns the Wi-Fi you're using, like your boss, your school, or your parents, can see all of those websites too. Yikes. Yikes. ExpressVPN gives you the privacy you need. All of your internet traffic gets rerouted through a totally encrypted server so those web searches can stay between you and God. Woo! Folks, I I use VPN because uh, you know I don't know I don't want people knowing what I'm surfing. I'm always surfing. Yes. Sometimes I body surf if you know what I mean. Sometimes I uh, I, I crowd surf if you know what I'm saying, folks. Here, here. I got a lot of preferences when it comes to uh, my searches, and those are my business. Yes. I don't want anyone knowing my business. I don't want my landlord knowing. I don't want uh, the FBI knowing. I don't want the cops knowing. I want some privacy. P R I V A C Y because it's important to me. That's why. Mm. ExpressVPN works on all your devices so you'll always be protected and you can fire it up with the click of a button. Oh, so yeah. take yourself off the naughty list with the number one rated VPN. Visit expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays and get three extra months for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-N-V-P-N.com slash Tuesdays. Expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Tuesdays, back to the show, bro. This is from the Enterprise website. Uh oh. It says, Will Enterprise pick me up? Yes, our free pickup service is available at non airport locations. Oh, yeah, it's Enterprise. Enterprise, we'll pick you up during normal business hours. How about that? Yeah, yeah that well, was their big thing. Well, pick me up from the airport. How about that? It says non airport. Ah, ah, but that's where I'm going. I don't live there. Well, here's that's what you got to do. You no, know you do. You get the driver guy with the hat, the, the you know, the uh, Lloyd Christmas Chauffeur, guy. Chauffeur, yes. Pick you up, take you to someone's house, a house. Mm. Then you have Enterprise meet you there. I like it. You get picked up. You go to someone's home, you fuck them, <laughs> you steal their TV, and then you get an Enterprise. Well, I love when, when you rent a car and it's good. There's nothing. It's like all travel. It's like a microcosm. It's a nightmare. It's annoying. But once you have that car and you've driven yes. off the lot yes. and you put the little paper up on the visor, you find the tunes, you get the mirrors adjusted, and 
Vroom, oh, off yeah. you go in your little leaf blower. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hit SF traffic immediately, and I was like, I'm going to go to the hotel, check in, jerk off, take a shower. I had to go straight to the gigs, all the SF traffic. So... Get to the gig, killer gig, we go out, we get drunk with the entire staff of this venue. Wow. Yeah, and it was like old time. Remember you used to do that with the clubs? I was going to say, you never hear about that with a theater. I know. I didn't even know there was a staff at a theater. Well, these are pot-smoking Bay Area weirdos. They're right. all fun-loving and dreadlocky, and they got a hemp shit going. So uh, we go out to this random bar. So I do a move on stage. So buckle up if uh, you not you don't want to hear this. But I go, what bar are we going to? And everybody goes, Julio's, my mom's <laughs> house, Jenny's or whatever, uh, Tidal Wave. Four and I great go, podcast, by the way. Yeah, I'm like, we're going to Tidal Wave. Let's do it. Everybody goes, woo, Tidal Wave. So Tidal Wave gets a giant wave of drunks from uh-huh. my show. And then I go to... Dave and Buster's over here. Oh, that's a good move. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel bad for the people. But. I know. <laughs> I get a lot of messages like, we're at Tidal Wave. <laughs> we get, you know, he'll turn the camera around. It's all these people like, woo, comedy. You know, it's a sea of people. I've been that guy, by the way. Ah! St. Patrick's Day, 2009, going, I don't see. And you're like, I just walked in. I'm like, yeah. I'm standing on the bar. I'm on the shoulders. You're like, ah, I'm in here somewhere. By the way, that went on for about two hours. I'm not kidding. I don't recall it. Uh, yeah. But- uh, so I'm now I go to Dave and Buster's. They're hip to me. Uh, the whole place is full. The whole show's there. Were they going to see you, or they just happened to go to Dave and Buster's? No, they were at my show. Then they went to Dave and Buster's. I guess because they're like, "Fuck Tidal Wave, that place sucks." And then I show up at Dave's, and the whole place is full of the show. And I got a headlock. I got a noogie. I got a credit card swipe. So did a lot of shots. A lot of uh, a lot of unwanted drinks, but I felt bad, so I took them down. Took a lot of photos. They they whisked me into a little corner, and I just talked to the staff, and they shit on about eight comics for, oh. for the whole night. It was oh, great. Let me know after. I'm interested. I will. I will. Oh. One is in some hot water right now. He got trashed. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know who's in hot water. Well, Matthew Perry, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we got way too drunk, then uh, drunk drove home, back to the hotel. You know that thing where you, you check in at four? In the hotel. Yeah, you know, you're like, hey, I'm here, I got my suitcase, the, I'm parked on six uh, parking spots, and I'm like, hey, I'm here to check in, Mark Norman. You take your wallet out, you drop it, you you, you burp on the, on the lady, and then you check in, and then you have to leave at 11. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, but that, you know, it's on me. What are you going to do? Yeah. So you wake up, you're hungover, me and Caleb jump in the car, we drive to Sacramento. Sacktown, the Bay Area, and back down. Oh yeah, the Crest Theater, two shows. Wow. Great time, killer, killer room. Uh, had, the, had the kid filming me, didn't get one lick of footage. What, do you have Salacuse out there? Was the sun? <laughs> no, it was on me, I just couldn't think of anything. You ever have that where they're like, George Santos, and I'm like, that guy lies. Oh, yeah. All well, right, what do you got over here? You know, it was, I was off. I want to do a whole special like that where I do crowd work and just make a conversation about the place. Yes, I'm like, yes. Where are you from? Oh, Louisville. Oh, Muhammad Ali. He's from there. Yeah. And then you move on. <laughs> I just did that for 20 minutes at Grove 34. I mean, I'm going to release the whole thing. I'm like, here you go. Here's your crowd work. <laughs> That's anti Where are you from? I'm from Florida. Oh, wow. Well, the uh, Florida Panthers. Sunshine State. There you go. All right. Good work, Queens. Yeah, wow. that was me. That happens. I mean, you know, to me, it's like that's why. That's why. That's pretty good. It's fun. I guess you we'll know. Just, we'll hang out. We'll chat. And then you see the guy later. He's like, I was the Florida guy. <laughs> you know, you always get that guy. But uh, yeah, great time. And uh, Sacramento is a great little town. Yeah, I haven't explored Sacramento too much. I've done the club a couple times. We did it, of course, a bunch years line. ago with DeRosa. Yeah, that was fun. 2010. What a wild weekend that was. We just drank all day, swam in the pool, did shows, drank all night. Tried to go to a titty bar. We couldn't find it. Couldn't find the titty. We're just walking on the highways, pre phone, really. Yeah, I got some great photos of that. I was on my way to Peru. I went to Peru oh. from there. Oh. Yeah, and then uh, we tried to get DeRosa to fuck all these women. We saw Piranha or something like that. Piranha the movie, yeah, with the tits. Piranha 3D. DeRosa loved it. We thought he was stupid. Then we went to like Cheesecake Factory. And we hooked him up with that old bag. Yeah, yeah. He kept trying the old bag. It was like a 68 year old woman. She was like, "Get out of here. I I need a older man with shoulders." Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> She's like, I need a shoulder to cry on. My well, husband's dead. DeRosa is such a nut. We're sitting there with him. We're like, hey, look at that hot old lady. She's got to be 88. And he was like, really? You think she's hot? We're like, God, she's so sexy. The old women give the best head, all this shit. And he's like, really? You think so? I'm like, I dare you to go ask her out. And he was like, we convinced him, and he got up and asked her out. I've always been blown away by those people that are just walk up to women and say, hey, do you want to go out with me? You never did that? Uh, maybe drunk late in the night a couple times. Yeah. But I had to have a lot of alcohol. Let me tell you a story about Derek's wedding. His, his, his wife's friend, the beginning of the week, it was like one of these destination, there for the week kind of thing. You're there from uh-huh. Wednesday through Sunday. And uh, I was like, you got any friends? I want to fuck your friend. I don't care if she's ugly or fat or gross or has braces or she's a child. Yeah. And she goes, I have one single friend. I met her. I wasn't into her. I was like, yuck, not my cup Oh, of that tea. bad, huh? Yeah, well, you know, I just I wasn't vibing. And I was hanging with the boys. Sure, I'm with sure. With all the buddies, all the buddy boys. And then, uh, so we were there for five days. I kept seeing her and be like, hey, Sue, nice to see you. Okay, take care. Comb your hair. And then at the reception, the after party is like the wedding, then the reception, oh, then the after party. That one, that's when the debauchery really kicks up. Well, it's 4 a.m. The lights come up. It's broad daylight now. Last minute, 11th hour. And I walk up to uh, Erica, my, my friend, and I say, uh, I think it's too late to make a move on your friend. And she goes, yeah. Ah. And I was like this. All right. Well, I just had to ask. Yeah. Uh, but it was like one of those things where like all of a sudden you're horny. And of you're course. Like, is that person. And it's at the buzzer. You know, it's like the last call where you look around and you're like, oh, boy, there's a couple of linebackers in here. But uh, this is it. I got to make the move. Well, that's the thing. I never had the uh, company. I would always uh, I never wanted to get turned down. Of course, yeah. So I would just always go like, hey, yeah, nice to meet you. And I would just be like a buddy. Yeah. And then at the last, after three hours of being buddies, I'd be like, wouldn't it be funny if we fucked? And she's like, funny? What? Yeah. And you're like this, all right, never mind. I know. It was bad. I really needed the woman to make a, make the moves. It's really hard. It's a lot of work. It takes a lot of hours, a lot of like putting time in, as guys call it. You know, that's why the gays are really happy people. Unbelievable. The gays, they just go and suck each other off and then keep it moving. They put their dick through a hole in a brick wall at a rest area. They get it sucked. They get back in the car and they go to the share concert. Yeah, and there's no me tooing or anything. No. It's literally like, no. hey, nice to meet you. You're handsome. Would you want to suck me off? And if the guy doesn't want to, he's like, ah, no, I can't right yeah. now. All right, <laughs> yeah. take care. Well, it's a fascinating thing because women like fucking. They like sex. But they have to have so much prep, and I get it. Like they can get pregnant, they can get a you know a bad guy, a mean guy, an aggressive guy. So there is that. But it it's almost uh, sucks for them that they can't enjoy just immediately fucking someone. Right. They just can't enjoy that. So that actually makes their life worse. Yeah, it's hard. And well, I'm sure they get a lot of clingery people too. Oh as yeah, do no. we and There's all of that, that goes but, out there. And the one thing you don't want to get is pregnant. I can tell you that. But yeah, I would not want a kid. Uh, but. Yeah, it was. Uh, those were tough. And sometimes, even when women really put it out there, I still was like, ah. Oh, really? She hates me. Yeah. Crippling self esteem back in those days. Yeah, now, it I was feel like tough. I could really kill it. Well, you ever have this one? You ever had the girl, like, after a couple hours, she's like, hey, you know, why did, I've been waiting for you to come talk to me. And you're like, how on earth would I know that? Right. How would I have that knowledge? Tell a, tell a girl to come up and go, my friend likes you. Then I'll do everything else. I love that. I needed that. Love and, that. Uh, very rarely got it. Well, yeah, it's it it's no surprise why there's all these problems with the dating world. It's like you got to know what the woman wants, and then you got to take a shot. But if you take a shot and she didn't want it, then it, you're an asshole. It, but she won't tell you what she wants, so you have to figure it out. It's all very vague and wacky. Just tell me. Message tell me. me. That's I'll- why DMs. I didn't have the DMs. I yes. would have loved a DM slip. Yeah, love slip a into the slide. DM Because now it's different. I mean, Chuck's got 11 women on exactly. his fucking arm. I mean, it's crazy. That's how easy it is. Anybody, a ghoul could do it. <laughs> but it, it's women. That, I've talked to women about this. They go, well, we don't want to get rejected. And you're like, but neither do we. Right. Why? How come your feelings of getting rejected are, are more valid than mine? And they go, well, you're the guy. I'm like, I still have feelings, but I guess, you know, no one cares about them. Yeah, I just never thought anybody wanted to fuck me. No, same. And it turns out many did. Really? Uh, many strong. 
Hey, I had sex with 39 women. That's not Whoa. bad. Whoa. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. How I mean, many you got to consider I've been in a relationship for 13 years, and I was in two other two-year relationships. That's uh, 17. Yep. And I've only been an adult for 22 years. So that's not bad. Who was the best? Best all is right. tough. I mean, best is tough because it's like, well, it's like just, hottest. Yeah, who got you going? Who really get you goat? Well, yeah, I had. I mean, we could have to talk off air, Ooh. but uh, there's a couple dudes who's uh, yeah who really did something nice for me. But yeah, some people different strokes for different folks. You yes. know, some people would suck your dick with twisting the head. A head oh, twist. Oh yeah, love that. <laughs> love a head twist. That is top notch. Yeah, the twisty head, the twisty like because some people they love sucking dick. Yeah, guilty. <laughs> but you know, I'm with you. It's a very uh, it's a well. If you're good at something, I think people want to let you know they're good at it. Yeah, you got to do it. So, uh, but anywho, hey, sorry, I miss uh, sex. Yeah, but flying back from sack was you. You ever look at the clock? You go me 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 me. I hit the alarm. It's eight a.m. I pack my shit up. You get to the air. You got to return the rental car. Uh-huh. By the way, don't ever get the prepaid gas. No, of course. It's the biggest sucker's I, bet ever. I've I mean, fucked I think we've up. talked about this. It's Unless you push it in on empty. We've had this exact Which conversation. I have pushed we've, it in. We've had this same exact All dialogue. right, we'll move but on. Yes, unless, unless you put it in neutral and push it in, I've they are it. fucking you out of money. Yes. I looked at the gas when he, I, you know, you read, you know, they always give you that email at the end that you never look at. Uh-huh. I looked at it, $92 for the prepaid gas. Oh, because California. I guess so. What'd you rent? An SUV? No, I got a I got a tank. No, I got a I got a Nissan, whatever. But the guy was nice enough because I brought it back in. I'm I'm trying to like hit the gas during driving just to use it all, you know, yeah, just yeah. to make my money's worth. I've, I've done the same thing. You're like yeah, yeah, and, yeah, I'm pulling in and out of parking lots and stuff. Uh so I bring it in and it's half full, like literally right on noon, right on that twelve in the middle. And the guy goes, Ah, uh, you paid for a full tank. I'll just charge you for half of one. So it was whatever, forty five dollars. Oh, that's nice. But I did. I realized we got the the Live Nation shell cards. Ah, I could have filled it up for free. I've done the same thing. I've driven to D.C. and back. I gotta sell it to somebody. Yeah, because I don't. I, I'm never driving. And now every time I'm driving, I see a shell station. That's hard to say. Shell Station. She sees a Shell Station. At the seashore. Uh, but anyways, I, I keep seeing it, and I'm like, fuck, I have... And then someone else gave me a Shell card. Yeah. So I got two Shells. Mine yeah. the Shell. <laughs> I don't know. I'm out shell of Shell Toe. But yeah. Uh, shell B. Aha! Uh-huh. R.I.P. <laughs> shell A? All right. So the Shell cards, though, I don't know if the folks at home know, but Live Nation has been raping everyone on ticket prices and fees and surcharges. So I think they feel bad. So they're giving all these comics shell cards, like 250 bucks for shell. Yeah. Like a gift card. And I'm trying to shell mine. Yeah. And well, you're a little shellfish. But I can't find a shell to save my life. Uh, so I'm, I'm going out of the way. I'm spending 20 bucks in gas to find a shell. But it's a whole thing. That's what's hard about it. It's a, it's, it's a weird. It's like it's like someone giving you a Super Bowl ticket. It's like a stanza. He's like, you right. give me a bill. You hand me a shell card. It's like a. Uh, it's like just living on my mind. Yeah. And I'm like, just give me 250 bucks. I know. I'm grateful. I understand. Everyone's got a right to us. And I know. Yeah, we're shit. grateful. But you get a gift card to Shell gas station. And again, I only drive once every three months. Yeah. It's it's it, object impermanence. I have to tape Ooh. the Shell card on my door. Yes. Because you're never leaving the house thinking like, okay, do I have any gift cards that I'm gonna need? Yes. I mean, we're a corporate shell. All right, Shell Silverstein. But yeah, so got there. But my point is, you get the 8 a.m. wake-up call. You, you return the rental car. You get on the shuttle. You get to the airport. You fly to Salt Lake City to connect. Salt Lake City in the back of the plane to JFK. I look at my watch. Oh, God, it's 930 New York time. Then you get home from JFK. Now it's 1030. And you're like, man, that whole day is gone. I did nothing that whole day. And I got up at 8 California time. I know. And now I'm here at 1030 New York. It's a whole country. That's why you got to really try to enjoy the film you're watching yes, on the plane. Yes. Or read a book or send an email or write a joke. Because otherwise you're like, what the hell did I just do? I know. I know. Well, luckily Delta throws you the free Wi-Fi now. 
That's nice. That's big. So you can kind of get some emails done or put, post a clip, whatever the fuck. But I just had that. It was a rainy weekend. I had the weekend off, Saturday, Sunday off. And it's rainy. It's, Sunday was a washout. And then you got a baby. You got to watch the baby. So you're just like, I didn't do anything. I was in my no. house for 50 hours straight. Well, you kept a baby alive. Yeah, I did that. I That's mean, you something. go for a walk and you have, I'm enjoying the baby. But in the old days, by that I mean six weeks ago, on a Saturday, Sunday, it's like I flew to Minnesota. I rented a bike. I yes, rode a bike all over yes. the city. I went to two museums. I went hiking. I, I cheated on my wife with a boy. Yes. You know what I mean? You, I went and <laughs> relapsed. I, I did four shows. You do a meet and greet. I met 3,000 people. Right. I fly back, and it feels like two years have passed. Right. Now it's just like it's all meshed into one mashed potato of a day. I know. I watched 75 hours of football. But I got to tell you about my Friday night. I Hit had best, me, fatty. Best nights of my whole life. ooh Because everything now is really like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. But uh, so Friday night. I got Grove 34, which is a godsend. Love the 34. This is the best thing that ever happened to my life. Best comedy club in the city, I say. Wow, that's a little much. (laughs) I'm telling you. But it's a nice room and good good staff over there. Well, I'm telling you, I mean, the seller, can you just go to the seller and say, hey, can I do an hour and then you just give me the money and I book whoever I want? No. No, you can't. You can't do it there, and at the uh, at the cellar, is it just people that came directly to see you? No, they want to see Zarna Garg and, and whoever, who are all great comics, Zainab Johnson, and uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm just naming people that start with Z. I yeah, don't know why. <laughs> Zoltan. My bro, yeah, my, is that it? Are there any more Z comics? Do we uh, just name 100% of the Z comics? Yeah, maybe it's, uh, Zoloft, Zorro. Zilch. A lot of Zilches. Yeah. I work at the cellar. Yeah. Um, 45. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, zipper, Zonko. Zippity Doodah. Zip, zippity Doodah. Okay. Z- goodbye, Dave. Z- I think we nailed it. Zach. Galifianakis. Oh, it's all the Zach. Zach. Zach Sims. Zach No Towers. Zach. Uh huh. Well, Zach Sims, does he do stand up still? I think he's out in LA doing something. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah. Which one of those guys quit? Did one of your buddies? Zach Moore. I think Neil Stasny quit. I think he's writing. Oh, he's so, so that, funny. That counts. But yeah, funny guy. Anyway, Stasny. Mm. Nah, huh? Z. I don't know. Oh, I see. You Z? Uh, <laughs> um, I need some Zs. <laughs> Woo! Um, so Friday night, I'm at Grove 34. Anyways, I think it's the best club. It's run by comics. It rules. And uh, it's also five blocks from my house, which is nice. Yes, that That's helps. That, 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 that helps. adds to this uh, list. Uh, the, to the allure. But you can also smoke cigars in there. Oh, that's right. You can drink for free. Yes. You can fuck hookers back. I'm, I'm saying there's a lot of benefits there. A lot of perks. That they don't have at the stand and cellar. Free M&Ms as well. There you go. There's a nice TV back there. Only green room with a TV. Yes, yes. They tape the shows. They just give it to you. Good They'll point. make reels for you. Yeah, good point. Um, Is so, that right? I didn't know about the reels. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot Real time. going on there. And you could even be like, hey, let me do a 4 p.m. show. Can I do a 1 p.m. show? They'll really work with you. Yeah. So anyways, I love them. I love Grove 34. Sarah shot a special there. Get excited about that. That's going to be fun. So Friday night, I got the 7P show 7 p.m and uh adrian Apuch has a 9 p.m Uh oh now we got a bumper so she texts sarah and goes hey why don't you open for me at the 9 p and i say okay great i'll do the seven i'll come back relieve you from the baby then you go over there and do the show there you go tag team back again now we're talking so i get uh our pal karen fian on the show past guest sure check out the patreon check out those feet one of our favorites feet hand and so uh, I go, hey, come to the show. You come early, see the baby. We'll hang out. Yes. And uh, we'll have a little, little family hang. I got Siobhan, Siobhan Baloney. Hey, good bulge. Love Siobhan. So he's on the show. So we're hanging out. It's a, it's a rainy night in Soho. R.I.P. McGowan. Mm. Karen comes over. She's late. So she gets there. It's pouring rain. She comes up. I don't realize it's raining. So we're supposed to hang out. I'm like, all right, we have to leave in two minutes. So kiss the baby. Kiss my wife. Kiss my dick kiss me bang bang so we hang out for a few minutes i go all right we got to get over there so i was like sarah you're on the second show oh so i forgot this part 
We got text. I got a text from Adrian. Says, uh, "Hey, you got the uh, guy's number at Grove 34." And I'm like, oh boy. Uh oh. So I, I go, "Yeah, here you go." Next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. Sarah and Karen get the text. Hey, could you guys co-headline? Oh, Adrian's flight got delayed or whatever. Oh no. So now they're the show. So now it's like a big night. They're yeah. they're hosting the show, whatever. So. Feehan and I, I'm like, we'll walk to Grove 34, do the show. After Karen's set, you come back here, hang with Sarah and the baby. I'll do my show. I'll shoot back. I'll tag you two back. You two go back over Holy to do the show. Holy hell, this is a real uh, musical chairs. Quite a musical chair. So, Fee, now you know Feehan. She's uh, she's upper crush. She makes a lot of cash. She oh, likes yeah. to, she wears designer. She takes lifts everywhere. You got she's that a, right. Uh, what do you call it? A uh, High maintenance? No, high society. Uh, high society. Yes. This, this girl, uh, she knows how to live. Oh, she lives well. So I go, eh, we'll just walk over. It's a few blocks. Unbeknownst to me, it's pouring rain. Ah. And so I don't have an umbrella. I go, I got no umbrella. We'll just walk. We'll get a little wet. We walk out there. I don't realize, because she just arrived. I've been inside for 48 hours with a baby. It's like a downpour. Mm. So I feel responsible. I'm like, oh, thanks for opening for me. I'll give you 10 bucks and uh, whatever. We start walking. It's like, whoosh, ah. and it's whipping in sideways. It's like Braveheart rain. Auntie M, it's a twister. And so, uh, you know, I, I throw her on my back. I'm carrying her. I, I put a rain jacket over her tits. Oh, yeah. We get over there. We're soaked. Like the shoe slosh where you step oh. and the water's coming out the socks. I'm like, I, I'm just apologizing profusely. I feel terrible. We should have taken a lift. I suck. Packed house. We go in the back. I got uh, my boy Lex filming. It's all going to be on uh, Punch Up Live, the new thing. Hell yeah. That'll really be something, maybe. We go back there. Packed crowd. Bunch of Tuesdays. Hottest crowd really? ever. They showed up in the Katrina and the downpour. Absolutely. And we're back there goofing around. Karen and I are playing up with the camera. And you hear Siobhan just getting like... Bring the pain wow. laughs. Wow. He's doing that N-word bit. It's, he's, he's, I looked out. He's wearing all leather. He's like, the motherfuckers can't be shopping <laughs> or whatever. He kills. Fian murders. She comes off. I go, go, go hang out with Sarah and the baby. She goes, of course. What do you think? I'm going to watch you, you piece of shit. I said, sure. all right. That's why I love you, you fucking douchebag. She leaves. I go up. have the set of my life. Wow. Remember comedy? It's fun. Oh, it's so fun. It's my first set in 10 days. Oh. Actually, that's not true. I opened for Rana on the night before at Grove 34. Boy, boy, that career is plummeting. Well, you know, we, 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 Friday. That's I Thursday. Uh, Just a guest spot. All right. Uh, although he paid me, which felt a little weird. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. But anyway, so I do the show. The show rule. It kicked ass. He's like, I gave him 40 bucks. I don't need to pick up my suitcase. Nah. <laughs> Just drag it down the street. Killer show. I finish. Say goodbye. Meet a couple people. Hey, thanks for coming. Now it's no longer. Siobhan gives me a ride back to the house. I say, thanks for the ride. I go upstairs. Baby's sound asleep. Karen and Sarah are there. They're making out in my dreams. They leave. They go do the show. And now I'm taking over the baby shift. He's sound asleep. I got the Washington, Washington, uh, Washington, Oregon football game. I order some food. I'm eating some pasta. Sarah goes, does a set. He sleeps the whole time. He comes Ooh. back. She did a set. I did a set. I got to hang out with Fee and got to hang out with Siobhan. Yes. Packed crowd, bunch of Tuesdays, got some reels, got a video backstage, on stage, crowd work, the whole thing. Look at you, got your work in and you're a good dad. Oh, it just felt like a million bucks. Great Friday night. So Grove 34, I'm back there. Uh well, this Friday, well, we're recording it. Whatever. I'll be back there a bunch. What a treat. And uh, go check out Grove 34. It's the newest, hottest club in town. And this is independent comedy run by comics in a great neighborhood. You got that right. And I love that room because uh, it feels like they really run it. There's no big corporation booker overhead guy where you're like, we got to check with the boss. They just go, you go, I want this. They go, you got it. And, you know, they. I've seen some of the... The uh, shit that goes on over there after hours, and they are fun. They let it rip. That's the only shit you can do in Queens. Manhattan, they got the thumb on you. That's what I'm saying. That's why it's the best. And and Rob Rigo, who's a hilarious comic, by the way, and uh, is a a pilot. He's a C-130 pilot. Iraq veteran, the whole thing. C-130, that's the gay guy from Star Wars. Yeah. And uh, I've flown one of those in the cockpit to Baghdad. Isn't that crazy? I forget about that. I was in Baghdad, in a war zone, in the cockpit, night vision goggles on a C-130. Is crazy, that crazy? Crazy. Did you shoot a, a Zionist? No, no, no shooting, and uh, I am one of those, but oh, uh, no shooting, different war. 
Oh, yeah, a squeaker. That was that was really something. But uh, yeah, you know, you've really you really realize sometimes you're like, I really lived. Yes. Not anymore, but I did. Yeah, you got it in. Most people didn't get it in, and then they had the kid. You got it in, and then kid. Iraq, Israel, England, Peru, Ecuador, you name it. I've been there. Turkey. There you go. Hawaii. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh, many other places. I'm not going to do the whole list, but yeah, many please. more places, of course. Maybe but anyways, uh, that was my uh, that was my night. There you go. You got your work in, and uh, maybe tried some new shit. You got some reels. You got to see Feehan get a wet T-shirt. That's a night. Lots, lots of fun. Lots of good stuff. And I'm like I said, I'm doing it again this weekend. And I'm just, I'm just. Uh, it's so fun when you can get it in. And now you do have to like really. Focus on stuff now. You're like, okay, I have a half an hour. Yes. I got to write this uh, script. I got to do the podcast, all the stuff. Time management. I know. I, I feel for you. I'm sitting at home just jerking off, watching TV. I'm petting my cat. I With the baby, I couldn't do any of that. I have to run out, get diapers, and I have to cancel eight gigs. You know, you really can't uh, just fly by the seat of your dick. Yeah, when you're watching movies now, I've got to watch movies like on mute with subtitles on because I'm wow. watching, you know, Pulp Fiction stuff. I can't have them exposed to... It's like you got a terrorist in the other room. Just keep him happy. Keep it quiet. You know, you can't you can't rock the boat. And he has no idea what the hell's going and on. And he has no idea. He doesn't even know who I am. Wow. Man, these kids have got it made. Yeah, they really do. Man. You get the... I mean, this is why Louis, Louis popped. He broke... With the I want to throw my baby in a dumpster stuff, yeah. Now you now I get it because you're like everyone can relate to that who has a kid, right? It's a little tricky though because then they grow up and they're like, what? Yeah, that's I just a- think of that. I think we've said this, but I'm like I think of the damage done for my upbringing, and there's no video of yeah. my dad being like, I hope my kid dies. Yes, boy, we are lucky. There's no video. If if you had video of me shitting in a Seven Eleven just for a goof, you know, on a Thursday night, we'd be fucked. Yeah, we got. We're just the right age. I feel like. Yeah, well, I I try to make a bit out of this, but the phone is the only invention that changed the world. It's incredibly useful. It's incredibly helpful. But it's the only invention that's helpful that we go. Glad I wasn't around when I was a kid. Right. You know, like everything else, you're like, wow, we have uh, the printing press. I wish that was around when I was younger. But the phone is the only thing where you're like, thank God that wasn't here when I was a kid. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, it's social media. The phone is, yeah. I guess the phone is okay. It's the media. Yeah. And the news feed coming right in your dick hole every day. Twitter, just evil, bad news, sad. Oh, it's not good. It's not good at all. I know. You know, somebody made a good point, though. and I don't know how we're looking. But, 57. okay. Somebody made a good point. They were like, Social media will probably have regulations eventually, much like cigarettes or booze or whatever. But when you think about it, just since it's come out, we've are I've already regulated myself. Mm. You know, like I don't look at this during the morning. I uh, I I post on here and I get the fuck out. I don't read a bunch of shit. So don't you feel like you've even put guardrails on it since it's come out? Yeah, because I used to just sit there and scroll and just like and, and absorb all this right. Facebook and evil and death. And now I'm like, I'll post my thing and I, I get out. I think that's the same with booze and cigarettes. Yeah, right? yeah. Certain people are like, oh, I got to quit smoking or smoke less, whatever. But I think at the beginning, it was just like, oh, we didn't know it was bad. I know. So you just take it in. Yeah, no, it's a, it can make you feel nauseous. Oh, it's just disheartening. Yeah. Uh, uh, we left on a shit note there. Uh, we're doomed. There you go. No, Even- it's going to be great. AI, save us. Say I will save us, Ozempic, AI, uh, double sided dildos, all these things will save us. I love it. I love it. Yeah. What was it? Ass to ass. I didn't take it out for air. What's that movie? Huh? That's um, you know the movie. Isn't that what you were referencing? JFK? Memento? Not Memento. Same director. Uh, the drug movie. Oh, yes. Requiem. Requiem for a Dream. Maybe not the same director, actually. No. But Requiem for a Dream, I confused those movies because they came out around the same time, and they're I watched dark. them both. And they're very dark and weird, but yeah. One's Aronofsky. Is that Aronofsky? And yeah, that is Aronofsky. Paul Thomas Aronofsky, and then Aronofsky the other one is, is uh, Christopher Nolan, Nolan. a young Nolan. Christopher Nolan just can't make a movie that doesn't jump around. He's incapable of doing it. Huh? That's not oh, like, no, yeah. oh, it's the future, it's the past, it's the wacky. Jump we around. had this again, this already happened. Jump around, yeah. Inception, Looper. I don't know if he did Looper, but Inception, that one. Looper. 
Oh, uh, B- Benjamin Butt. Oh, that was Fincher. That's Fincher. Fuck my ass hard. Um, yeah. What else is a jump around? Christopher Nolan. Well, you know, you had Oppenheimer is all jumpy. What was the time travel? What did you already say that one? Tenant. Ah, Tenant. Tenet. I, I, I couldn't follow Tenant with Wikipedia and a Dr. Seuss book and a roadmap. I didn't no. know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> no, well, you got to get rid of that uh, blowing Tenant. And um, I don't know. There's something. Memento, Tenant. Uh, what's the spinny bottle one? You said that one already? Spinny. Inception. Inception. Uh, they spin a bottle? This, they spin the top. Yeah, the, the totem. Ah, the dreidel. The totem pole. Sure. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Chuck just got mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm, uh, I gotta sleep more. I'm sorry. I'm gay. It's my fault. Oh. Watch this. There's a lot of water in there. Didn't realize. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where are you gonna be? You got any dates? Uh, yes, I not do. Coming up? Oh, holy shit, I have a bunch of dates. Tacoma, January 11th to the 13th. Poughkeepsie, January 19th to the 20th. I'm working on the ticket link. Hopefully it's out by now uh, for Comedy Mothership, February 8th through the 10th. That's going to be a lot Ooh, of fun. That's going to be a humdinger. That club is lunch. Yeah, that's going to be fun. A good time. Uh, J.P. Leonard's going to be in town. Oh, I love, the, I love the J.P. We'll Leonard. smoke cigars in the green room. I think Feehan's coming with me. Sarah will be there. The whole family will be there. It's going to be a family affair. And uh, Oh, and uh, Chris Walsh is there, too. Oh, so it's going to be a man. big event. And then uh, where else? Let me look at my book. It's like a reunion. I have a fucking ton of dates here, and I keep not... Plugging them. But in the meantime, check out uh, Joe and Ron on Talk Movies. I'm bad at plugging other shit that I'm doing. And uh, fuck me, I'm sorry. Pull some of mine up oh, as Springfield, well. Missouri, February 22nd through the 24th. There it is. And then uh, Good Nights in Raleigh, March 14th through the 16th. Pittsburgh Improv, nice. March 28th through the 30th. Burlington, Vermont. Hey. April 12th. That's my mother's birthday. One night only. O T O T O. One time, one time only. And then Buffalo Helium, I'm coming back there uh, April 25th to the 27th. And then May, it's a far, long way away, but Indianapolis Helium, St. Louis Funny Bone. Finally coming back to St. Louis. People are like, why are you coming to St. Louis? What the fuck? Great club. Yeah, well, they, uh, they offered me uh, Helium. I've heard nothing but bad things about the Helium. It's not their best. And uh, the Funny Bone was always good to me, headlining me before oh, anybody. So I'm going on. there. Oh, thank you very much. Oh. Holy Did I shit. leave that in the elevator? Oh, that's mine. I'm what returning happened? that to Amazon. Oh, my God. That was scary. Where the, where the hell did I leave that? Somebody oh, the I left it on a door handle and then got a cup of coffee. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, that was terrifying. How'd they know it was? Oh, it's got my name on it's it. It's got your name, yeah. I'm an idiot. Jeez, this is why I can't have children. I just leave it hanging on a on a hook somewhere. Oh, God. should be hanging it at all. Woo. And uh, check out Punch Up Live. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on at Punch Up Live, exclusive material, and uh, I'm doing sort of a, a Patreon-y type of thing on there, so get on there. Oh, nice. All right. That's exciting. Well, I'll be uh, all over the road. Norfolk, Virginia... Uh, the lyric in Baltimore, which I hear is a real humding. I'm going oh, there yeah. with uh, Ron, uh, not Ron, Umar, the opposite, Pakistani. Uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, that needs some help. The lyric in Birmingham, that's a Whoa. double lyric. Um, then all kinds of crazy dates. We added a show in Tampa, uh, coming to Phoenix. I'm uh, coming on your your hair. We're, we're going everywhere. MarkNormanComedy.com. So uh, keep on keeping on and send me clothes. I'll wear them for one day. And uh, if you got any mildew tips, keep them coming. Thank you, Chuck. Hey, check out my podcast, Fun Bearable. Uh, I want to give a quick thanks to the Tuesdays because we just got our Spotify wrapped. And oh. Fun Bearable is now in the top 2% of podcasts globally. Wow. A lot of Tuesdays came over. A lot of fun over there, you know, Writing into the email and being on the Facebook group and stuff like that. Really, really appreciate it. We're having a lot of fun. Funbearablepod.com, at funbearablepod on social media. Thank you guys very much. Here, yeah. here. And uh, join the Patreon. We're doing, I, we, we got to talk more about the Patreon because I think the people want just us podcasting. Uh-huh. So the last few episodes have been that. Chuck says we're gay, we're idiots. God damn. I didn't say <laughs> <anything>. <laughs> sneeze. Yeah, bless Russell me. Just I, have, I have some unfortunate numbers to, to, to go with your plan, but. Okay, oh. but we've never done what we're, we're doing. We've never done just regular podcasts. We've done it for quite a while Consistent. now. Consistent. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm wrong. Well, I'd like to hear these numbers. Message us. <laughs> this is it. Call in, email, tweet. 
text. Yes. What do you want the Patreon to be? Well, we just we're gonna put up the bonus where you actually call to action and explain it on the Patreon. Oh. So that that'll be up by the time right. this is up. All right. All right. I'm gay. There you myself. go. Myself. My father hates me. We're learning. We'll figure it out. We, uh, we'll see you all in hell. We're only eleven years in. Get on the Patreon. <laughs> uh, eleven, eleven years.